What's up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is currently a Tuesday and I am about to go to a midwife appointment to kind of have my 20 week checkup to review the results of the ultrasound, which you guys know now was a baby boy. So we get to follow up on all of that fun stuff today. And honestly, just, I have a lot to do today. I'm vlogging. We're packing for our trip to Sweden, which is coming up next Monday. I'm planning for Viv's first birthday party. There's just a lot in the mix. So I'm going to be vlogging all of that today. This video is also sponsored by Cubo AI and they have a really exciting offer for you guys So if you're interested in hearing more about that, then just keep on watching I'm really interested about what we're gonna talk about at this midwife appointment today because we didn't have like a full-on scare But just a little bit of a scare this past week after I had the 20-week scan Basically, I was in there and the scan went really really long like 30 to 45 minutes over time what it usually goes and it's a full hour for the 20-week anatomy scan so that's a really long time and I could see see on the screen beside me because from where I was at I could see like what was going on they were taking a really long time on the spine the brain and the kidneys specifically and I just remember thinking like oh god what is going on especially because at the 11 week scan we ended up hearing out about the nasal bone so obviously all this stuff is going through my head and I just had like a bad feeling when I left so I ended up calling our midwife and just letting them know like hey if you can give me a call before the follow-up appointment to just let me know so I can wrap my head around this like I would really appreciate that and so essentially they said like on our end no news is good news so if you don't get a call from us tomorrow or the next day like everything's good if we do call you it's because there's something we need to talk about so obviously I am just like all right I hope I don't get a call the next day I'm at work and I get a call from them so I get up and I go from my desk and I take this call and luckily everything did actually end up being okay essentially they were just saying that the reason the scan took long and the reason that they had to like mark it as an abnormal ultrasound was because the baby was so squirmy that they couldn't actually get all the like shots that they needed to get so they needed to get better shots of the spine the kidney and the brain all of the parts that I know that they hadn't taken enough of so they recommended actually going back for another ultrasound like three or four weeks from now which is why I don't know if there'll be enough to talk about today or what we'll review um, but I am excited to just hear the heartbeat again to just make sure that things are looking good and from the other results I just want to know how big the baby is measuring as well so hopefully we can get an update on all of that stuff today it's honestly nice to just like take a second to breathe before I go into like appointments or things like that these days because life has just been so full-on recently like this week last week next week are on Honestly, like some of the busiest weeks that I feel like I've ever experienced as a person and it's certainly the busiest season that Jared and I have ever been in as husband and wife and it has honestly been a little overwhelming like all I can really say right now is it feels like every major life thing that could happen is happening in the course of like a couple of weeks out of just nowhere to be quite honest and we are both feeling it big time a nice thing is that it's all good stuff it's all exciting stuff but it doesn't make it any less like overwhelming or intense and so I'm hoping that we can just like sit down and give you guys a little bit of a just a life update in a little bit and bring you up to speed on where things are currently at but we also leave for Sweden on this coming Monday for 10 days and on the 13th I start full-time work five days a week again I went back at three days a week so I've been home with Vivi on Tuesdays and Fridays which has been a really good way to break up the time but I have very much felt like the weeks have already been full with that schedule so I have to admit I'm a little bit nervous to go back at the five days of just like how we're gonna fit everything in but we're just trying to give each other and ourselves grace with like managing everything right now and like taking the breaks when we can. So before I go into appointments, it's always a second for me to just like breathe and to pray and to take a deep breath. All right, I'm back home. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of an update on how that went. If I sound super stuffy, I am. I have like found that I've had sinus, just like a congestion throughout a lot of this pregnancy. It also doesn't help that I have hay fever and seasonal allergies and I'm sitting beside a window. So if I sound stuffy, that's why. But I just got back from the midwife appointment. We basically just went over the results that we do have from the ultrasound. Everything looks great. Um, the nasal bone is present and looks normal, which is amazing. Again, they just confirmed that they want to get a couple like like better shots of those key areas so we booked another ultrasound for I think it was June 14th which is actually Vivian's birthday 
at 8 a.m. and I'll go in for just like a quick 30 minute scan and we'll make sure that we get the shots that we need. But we listened to heartbeat, all of that looks good. They took my blood pressure and all of that looked good. Basically they were like, do you have any like questions or things that you wanna talk about? And I was like, honestly, not really. I feel like I just did this. So all of it is very fresh. And they were like, yeah, like there's not that much more to go over, so. We did talk a little bit more about the glucose test. I'm not going to do the three hour right off the hop. I am going to move forward with just the one hour and just see how things go from there. I'll update you guys on if I end up needing to go back after that. Right now, this baby is smaller than Vivian was at this point. They're technically actually measuring like five days behind from the due date of October 5th. And she said that the baby is currently only 25th percentile for weight. So still very teeny tiny in there. Again, she said like none of that really means anything yet. So we're gonna have to wait and see closer too. But stranger things have happened. I don't know, maybe this will be my tiny baby and I will not have to do another 9-7. Since I am now 20 weeks and six days, I wanted to do like a halfway pregnancy, just kind of like update with how I've been feeling and how things have been going so far. I honestly still have to remind myself that I'm pregnant sometimes because this pregnancy has genuinely been so much easier than my first pregnancy was. And I've said to Jared a couple times, I don't know if it's just because I'm like used to what pregnancy is like or if it has been easier overall, but I genuinely do believe that it's been easier overall. Like just overall less nausea, the headaches didn't last as long even though I did have them. I haven't really had that many aches and pains yet, knock on wood. So I'm currently 20 weeks and six days and my app is telling me that the baby is the size of like a sweet potato right now. I believe this is the point that you start measuring from like top to bottom instead of kind of all over. But this is saying that the baby is approximately 10 ounces and 6.5 inches. So again, all of that stuff is kind of up for interpretation, but I wrote down a couple of things that I've been experiencing at this point. So again, it has been an easier pregnancy so far. Maybe that's related to the fact that it's a boy, but I'm sure there are people that are boy moms watching this that did not have easy pregnancies. So I won't just like chalk it up entirely to that. To give you guys an update on the headaches, I haven't had them since around 19 weeks or so. So I was getting them daily and then I had like a week and a half off and then I got another one and I was like, oh, are we back in this? But then after that, that was just kind of a blip and I haven't had them since. So at 20 weeks, six days, I have been without a headache now for almost two weeks, which is incredible and I'm so grateful for that. One of the things that has started though is heartburn. So I noticed probably in the last four or five days that kind of around meals, but like also just in between meals, really just throughout the day in general, I'm having more of that feeling of heartburn that's really hard to like actually take away. I forgot how bad that feeling sucks and I forgot how to cope with it. So I feel like Tums were one of the ones, but if you guys have any heartburn recommendations, let me know. I also had my first leg cramp that woke me up in the middle of the night the other day. Like waking up at 3 a.m. with your entire leg just seizing and it is awful. I used to actually wake Jared up and like make him ride it out with me because I'm dramatic but this time I like had one in the middle of the night and I just kind of like waited for it to end but I've just had the one so I don't know if that's going to pick up and become more of a common thing now that I'm 20 weeks I honestly can't remember what that was like the first time around but I had my first one and I'm hoping that they don't continue. In terms of like cravings and aversions and things like that, I feel like I'm not really having those anymore. It's been probably two or three weeks that I have just been kind of eating as normal and trying to maintain as healthy of a diet in this crazy season as I can. I still am eating a lot of fruit. That's just what we've been buying because we've been getting it on sale because it's the season for it. So I don't know if that is a craving right now as much as it is just like, part of our regular diet and lifestyle but if anything i would say fruit is the big thing but overall no more like crazy cravings like pizza pockets with ranch and hot sauce or anything like that anymore my diet has definitely leveled out the other thing that i have noticed that has been interesting to me is that my sleep has been a lot better in this pregnancy i'm not getting up to pee as much as i was last time and i don't know if that's because i'm drinking less water throughout the day or if it's just like i'm just in more of a deeper sleep so i'm not kind of like getting up and it's like oh i might as well pee 
So I am feeling a little bit just like more rested in general, even though life is a lot more full. And I'm also dreaming a lot more this time than I was last time. I'm still waking up on my back a lot, which I know is something that is not super recommended, but for whatever reason, I start on my side and I just like wake up on my back. So we're working on that. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a bump date at 20 weeks. So this is what the bump is currently looking like at 20 weeks pregnant with my second baby. All of these stretch marks that are down here are from my pregnancy with Vivian. So no new stretch marks that I've noticed yet, but this is what the bump is looking like from the front and the side. I feel like it's a little bit smaller at 20 weeks than my bump was with Viv. Again, I don't know if that's because it's a smaller baby or what's going on with that but this is what the bump is currently looking like I am feeling a lot of movement and I have been feeling that since around 17 or 18 weeks and it's all just kind of like really low right now I still feel like I am carrying this baby quite low whereas with my first baby it was kind of all over so it'll be interesting to see how that changes over time so as I mentioned to you guys I am working with Cubo AI on today's video and we recently like a couple weeks ago just got their Cubo AI smart plus baby monitor and I wanted to do a little bit of a comparison between the Cubo and the outlet because you guys know I've talked about it before in my like newborn videos that we originally had the outlet and that was the baby monitor that we were using when we had Vivian but we actually didn't love it and I wanted to share at least my own experience with some of the things that are different between these two and why we ended up liking this one a lot more than the outlet so right off the bat one of the things that I love about Cubo specifically is that it was founded by a mom and when it comes to products specifically made for moms I feel like other moms just know moms best so the Cubo app will send alerts directly to your phone and it will notify you if your baby's face is covered if they are crawling kind of within the safe boundaries that you have a signed for their crib and that's something that we're paying a lot more attention to now that Vivian is climbing so much and it will also just send you notifications if you are in another room and your baby starts crying and they may need your attention. The other thing that's really nice about the Plus Baby Monitor is that the configuration grows with the baby as well so they have a number of different ways you can set it up. You can have it on a wall mount, you can have a crib stand, you can have a floor stand which is what we currently have so it can attach to a crib, to a bassinet, or anywhere else that you need it to actually keep your baby safe. So in terms of the things that really stuck out for me for Cubo that were different in my experience with Owlet is that with the Owlet, we just like could not get the camera to connect. The camera would always just say connection offline and it wasn't a Wi-Fi issue because our Wi-Fi is plenty strong and works for a lot of other things. My husband and I would have to like take turns pausing the movie and going up just to check on her to make sure that we like knew that she was okay. And I just feel like for new parents, you need a lot more peace of mind than that. When I told them what was happening with the camera and that we were having a lot of issues with connection they said that it was just our Wi-Fi and that our Wi-Fi wasn't strong enough that we would need to get a second router or upgrade our Wi-Fi to be able to use the camera surprisingly enough the Wi-Fi works great with the Cubo AI the last thing that I'll mention when it comes to the outlet camera is that unlike the Cubo camera it doesn't actually have any additional safety features so basically if you want some of those extra safety features to know that baby is breathing okay and that there's no concerns throughout the night you have to purchase just their smart sock which is an additional $400 in addition to that like $200 to $300 mark that you're paying for the camera so after all is said and done you're like $700 deep in all of the outlet technology and I just feel like performance wise from what I've heard and like my own experience it's not quite worth that when you can get all of these incredible features for so much less when you go with the Kibo camera so some of the things that I've loved personally about our experience with the Kibo so far is the picture quality it is absolutely pristine and they actually send you photos and videos like just through the app that it snapped throughout the night so you can save them to your phone if you want to another thing that is so cool about this app is that it has sleep analytics so it actually from the moment that you set your baby down at night to when they wake up in the morning can track your baby's sleep it tracks the number of wake-ups it tracks the amount of time that they were in a deep sleep and then the next morning you actually get those analytics to your phone so you have a really clear indication of how much sleep your baby is 
actually getting at now, which I just find is such a helpful thing, especially like as you're working through the regression and really shooting towards getting those full nights of sleep, having those analytics is such an incredible tool for moms. The other nice thing is that this also has like sound machine capabilities in it. So if you don't want to purchase an additional sound machine, like a hatch or something like that, you can use the Cubo and it will actually create that white noise sound. It can play lullabies for your baby as they go to sleep. So it really does have a lot of features in the one camera. Overall, I've just had an incredible experience with this camera, the brand, the app, and I honestly wouldn't be taking the time to tell you guys about it in this much detail if I didn't absolutely love it. And for me, it's just the safety and the peace of mind of knowing that Vivian is okay while she's asleep. And also, especially with our newborn that's coming this October, those are just things that you don't want to compromise on. And you can really tell that this is an intentionally created product. So Cubo has actually been generous enough to offer a discount code for my subscribers. So if you want to test out this camera, add it to your registry, see if it works for your family, you can use the code Beth2022. And they've let me know that this is a coupon code that's actually stackable on top of other sales on their website, which is just such an awesome deal. So once again, thank you to Kibo for sponsoring today's video. And if you guys check out the Kibo camera, I would love to hear about your experience. Today's baby lunch is Cajun chicken, broccoli, and corn on the cob. And all of this like set here is all from a store called Mommy's Ark. because she's just come to life in so many ways. Your personality is so beautiful. You love music, you love to chat, you love people, you love the out <laughs> you love the outdoors. Yes, you do and it's so fun. Yes, are you telling them about what you're like right now? What do you like? You like your vlog? Wow! <sighs> Where is the outside? Can you see the outside right now? Where is it? Yes! It's out there! And do you see a tree? Where is a tree? <coughs> yes! There is a tree out there! Do you want to come with me to the grocery store to get Dada? from the grocery store and all of these boxes were on the front porch and obviously I know what this one is and I ordered it but I don't know what either of these things are so I'm gonna open them up gosh it's like really heavy hey so we got a bunch of PR so this is from Carrie Loha it's bamboo bedding which is supposed to be really really soft so it's like a sheet set and pillowcases and then this is called a newsy or a nuzzy I'm pretty sure it's called nuzzy it's a weighted blanket, which is supposed to be really good for like sleep and anxiety, and it's knitted. So I'll show you guys when we actually get it out of this massive bag. This thing is freaking big. <laughs> Baby. Did we I'm lose stuck. dad? Ooh. You're working hard. You're doing good. We're gonna make it through this week. Yeah, you are too, baby. We're gonna make it through this week, buddy. <laughs> How many more days until we get to just... Wednesday? Every Thursday, time I think Friday, about the Saturday, Sweden trip Sunday. though, I think about the passport that we don't have yet. Six more days. <sighs> we'll have it. The passport will come. It will happen. It just has to. Where the child go? She's in the living room still, dude. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update on 
what I'm thinking right now and planning for her first birthday. I cannot even believe those words are coming out of my mouth. It's insane that we're already at this point planning her first birthday party. But I feel like I'm planning two separate things in my head right now because her birthday is June 14th and the party right now is June 25th. Essentially, I want to keep the 14th as chill as possible and still make it special for her here at home. But we have decided to take her to Sweden with us and it's a six hour time change. And by the time that we come back, we have the weekend at home, but then I start work full time like five days a week as of June 13th. So the 14th, I feel like we're all gonna be tired. She's gonna be still adjusting from that six hour time change. Sleep might be off. It just feels like too much to try and jam pack like all of these birthday things into that one day, especially when she doesn't know the difference. So we're gonna make the 14th just like nice and chill and special with our family at home. And then on the 25th is when we'll have her actual birthday party. And I'm gonna share all of the fun plans for that with you guys too. In terms of like things to make the 14th special, I I grabbed this like happy birthday photo banner that just has like one month, two month, three month. I'll link this in the description box for you guys so you can check it out if you want to. And then the big gift that we're doing for her that I think I'll wait to give her until the 25th is an Ikea kitchen. So I'm doing the Ikea kitchen makeover. I'm not doing one of the crazy ones where you like paint it and add backsplash and do all that stuff. I'm just changing out the knobs, adding some like rattan kind of coverings and liner to the back of the cupboards in the microwave. It is still in the mail coming to us from Etsy, so I don't have it yet, but I did just get these little knobs from Amazon that I will also link for you guys to just change out the knobs on the front. And then on the 14th, what I've picked up so far are these honey sticks. So these are like non-toxic beeswax crayons that are designed for really tiny toddler hands. So you can use these when your baby is like 12 months old and they're just starting to get into like that rhythm of what it's like to scribble on paper. So this is what it looks like. You can see that they're just like really chunky baby tiny crayons. Um, my mom I know got her some baby dolls to just practice like having a baby around and holding that baby and we'll like use it to explain to her that a baby is coming. And my in-laws have purchased her a learning tower which I'm really really excited about because I know that she's just going to absolutely love being able to stand up in the kitchen and like watch what we're doing and keep an eye on that because she's constantly like pulling at our legs wanting to see what we're doing while we're in there. So I'm super, super excited for her to get that too. So as I go through some of the plans and wrap my head around it, I'm gonna show you guys some pictures of what I'm thinking for her actual birthday party on the 25th, but I've rented out a local event space for it. Basically, our space would be too small to hold something like this, and if I did it at a family member's house, we would all have to travel too far for it to be worth it with young kids. So I've rented out a space that's like 20 minutes from our house, and it is stunning. It is white. There are massive windows, so a ton of beautiful natural light coming through. A really nice stone white fireplace. I'm thinking I'm going to do like the major setup in front of that fireplace, where Vivian will do a cake smash, and we'll have just a really cute bathroom backdrop behind her. So I'm actually working with a local decorating company that's going to come in and make this space look really beautiful with us. So they're going to be doing a color palette that's very like muted pinks and some beige tones, some white tones in there as well. And we're going to do like those little panel arch wall things. I'll show you guys a photo of what I'm talking about because it's not going to make sense, but we're going to do that. We might do a balloon arch as well. And then we'll do her cake smash kind of in front of that backdrop. And then this event company also specializes in outdoor picnics. So they're going to bring that kind of like vibe and look into the space. And we'll have a couple of outdoor picnic tables down in there as well for people to sit at that are just really beautiful. It's only going to be like an hour and a half long drop-in kind of thing but we'll do a cake smash for Viv where she'll get like a strawberry shortcake um, cake she absolutely loves strawberries so Jared and I were like how can we incorporate strawberries into the party without making that the theme so we're gonna do strawberry shortcake for her and then like a mini cupcake version of that strawberry shortcake for the adults so for food I'm gonna do like a veggie platter a fruit platter charcuterie stuff like that some punch and basically adults will be able to come in with their kids and just kind of hang out and mingle. We might do a time for gifts, different things like that. But I'm going to try and keep it really low key in the actual event time because she is only turning one years old, but it is really just an exciting thing. So I'm really looking forward to it. And those are all the plans that I have as of right now. Will Robin's race to fly you somewhere high above the trees? Yeah. 
This is the way we brush our teeth when we are done our day. Uh. Mm -hmm. Because the trees out front of our bedroom window are in full bloom, I'm fully green on camera right now and also wearing green, so I'm sorry that I am looking this way right now. I just finished getting Viv to bed. Jared and I tag teamed it tonight. He did dinner, clean up. I did like the actual bedtime routine with her and she's down and sleeping already, which is lovely because it's just shortly after seven, but I have a meeting tonight, Jared has a meeting tonight, so we're not quite done our work days yet, but we're getting there. Thank you guys for just bearing with me. I feel like in this like season of everything being a little bit more chaotic, I feel like there's more that I want to vlog, more ideas that I have for just videos in general, more things that I want to bring you in on, but it's just been such a stretching season with all the things that we've been balancing that I feel like those things are coming, but I'm just trying to keep my head above water with everything right now. So. Again, thank you for bearing with me in all of that. I'm hoping that we can get to more of just like a chill pace really soon and have you guys like in the loop with everything as well. But I'm gonna wrap up the vlog here and get ready for this next meeting and hopefully take a second to just relax before I go to bed tonight. Thank you again to Kubo for sponsoring this video. Again, if you guys wanna check them out, my code for that is Beth2022. I highly recommend it. I feel like you guys are absolutely gonna love the camera, especially for new moms and moms with newborns. It is so ideal for that stage of life. So be sure to go check that out. But until my next video, I love you guys. I'm praying for you guys and I will see you soon. Yeah.